Welcome to The Real Deal with Sean Matthews, where we have real conversations and business owners alike. Today, I have an amazing woman that I met, oh, I think it was a couple years ago. It feels like a couple years ago now um, at a networking event, and it's been a journey just getting to know her. Um, I respect this woman a lot. She uh, has been in the background doing a lot of things for different people, but women is her specialty. And I would love to introduce her now. Her name is Janine Vosper. And for over 20 years, she's worked as a general manager of sales for a successful multi-million dollar business, coaching high-performing commission-based sales teams. She established her coaching business, Speech Perfect, in 2007 to provide the tools to empower people to possess the confident voice of self-belief. Keynote speaker, host of the We Are Women podcast, and author of two books, Janine's coaching includes online training programs, private coaching, and group seminars. Having presented workshops in many countries around the world, Janine had coached, has coached international speech winners and in 2013 represented her country at an international speech contest, uh, speaking contest. From Alaska to Japan, New, New Zealand to Hawaii and around Australia, audiences have described Janine as brilliant, powerful, and informative. I definitely agree with that, Janine, and I can say that your podcast was one of the first podcasts that I've been interviewed on, so welcome, Janine. Thank you for coming on my podcast today. Thank you, and most welcome, Sean. I'm so happy to be here. It's, it's been, a couple, as you said, a couple of years since we met, but it's been a really fun ride, and every time we catch up, there's just so much interesting value in our conversations. I love it. Yeah, there is. There is. And um, and I've just bought your two books, but I won't um, go into that just yet. I really want to introduce you as a woman and as a business owner. You you started 20 some odd years ago. How did you get started, Janine? I didn't start 20 something years ago. I started about 40 something years ago. <laughs> <working>. <laughs> there you go. Well, if, we ju- if we're really telling the truth, I <laughs> I started working nearly 50 years ago. 50 years That's ago. giving my age away. I'm glad the filters are on Zoom. That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, started as 13-year-old with a part-time job and, mm. and have been working ever since. And everything I've ever done has been to do with connecting with people and, you know, being involved with people. And that's one of the things I love to do is is I am a very people person. You ask my husband, he has, doesn't have to do any talking. I can do it all for both of us. <laughs> but it's just been, you know, an amazing ride over the last 50 years working and enjoying and loving what I do. Mm, amazing. So you said you started when you were 13. What was your very first job? Was it entrepreneurial or? Well, I had to sell myself into, the, into my parents so that they would be comfortable with me going to work on a Saturday morning and it was at the local car wash mm-hmm. it was one of those automatic car washes but you were meant to put down the aerial on the cars before they went through and then you press the buttons and it all went through the wash and you dried it at, at the end it was it went well for quite a few months until I forgot to push down a couple of aerials and then it oh, well. wasn't it wasn't very successful after that but it was it was a fun job to have and it gave me I think I got paid five hours work I think I got paid two dollars fifty for the morning and it was an amazing I had enough money to catch the bus to roller skating and spend the afternoon there and wow. yes, it was yes. Great. times have changed then haven't they <laughs> the first full-time pay packet was $37.50 so yes times have fortunately changed a lot but things were a little bit slower and a, and a lot cheaper as well mm, amazing and so what got you started in the speech perfect that's your passion now isn't it it is I've I've always every sort of 10 years or so I 
or throughout my whole career, I've gone, what can I do next? What fits into my lifestyle next? And, and what is it that I want to do and share? And when my sons were young, I learned to become, I became a fitness trainer. So I learned taught aerobics and that fitted really nicely into, into that. And when they started to get a bit into the mid-school years, I then went and studied management and moved into a repping and then a management role and because the body was starting to fail with 16 aerobic classes a week and running so it was a good time to to move on but when I did I then sort of started to have this real passion and drive for myself you know I was working with my reps and and really helping them be successful and the business that I had moved into in the territory originally myself as a rep really was doing nothing, was zero sales. And within two years, doing over $400,000 a year in sales, selling Band-Aids, selling bandages and first aid products across the industry. And then when I moved into management, that that business took that with the, you know, with all the support of the team from $3 million to over $8 million a year. So it was, and it was through GFC, which was, you know, we're really pleased with those results. Exactly. The, but it was that, what am I doing for myself? You know, I, I just thought, had a message and there was things that I wanted to be able to share. And I've, I've always had this, well, people have said you just come across so confident in what you, you do. Right. And it's not that I'm brilliant at what I do. It's just that sense of oh, just believe in yourself and go and do it type of attitude. Right. And I knew... I, I, it took me a while to realise that that's not everybody's thought process. Mm-hmm. And when I did, I thought I need to share that. I'm about, this is where the sort of the 20 years, about 20 years ago, I found a, a brilliant public speaking organisation called, it was ITC then and Power Talk. Mm-hmm. And I'm still a member of that. I, I mentor at, at different club meetings and, and always mm-hmm. learning. Mm-hmm. And I rang a friend that it was on a Tuesday and I Googled public speaking and I ran, rang this friend and said, there's a meeting on tonight, we're going. And so 20 years later, I'm still there. Mm-hmm. And it was that, oh, my gosh, this is a great opportunity for me to learn to become a lot more skilled at speaking and be able to deliver the message that I wanted to deliver and to be able to help business people. So I started doing that while I was still working as a GM and started Speech Perfect. But I have to tell you where the name came from. I started my business as Shifting Visions, but that really wasn't clear enough as to what I was doing, although hopefully it comes across as to what I do is to help people shift their vision of themselves and what they do and how they do it. But we were at a wedding one night and we're one of the back tables and the microphone was being used very successfully held at the belly button. I don't know where people think that they can have a conversation and the belly button's going to be heard. (laughs) And it was quite a frustrating thing. We couldn't hear anything. And the movie Pitch Perfect was out at the time. Okay. And so after a few wines and a conversation (laughs) around the table, we came up with the business name Speech Perfect. Oh, is that where it comes from? I never knew that. You know, I never asked you. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. So it uh, it was a it was a process around the table and a yeah. bit of alcohol, but I'm very pleased with the result. Uh, sometimes those creative juices flow when you're around the right people. Mm, yeah, and when you can't hear the speeches anyway. So yeah. <laughs> well, fantastic. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so, so I got into that, doing that and getting, you know, that's been full time, part part time into that for the last eight years, and full time uh, went into two thousand and eighteen. Okay, great. So, when you were doing it part time, was it more of a passion project, or did you want to do it full time? I wanted to do it full time. I was still working as a GM. I moved myself into a five day fortnight in that role. Mm-hmm. Uh, which was a wonderful way to progress into what I wanted to do. It, it's really hard, and I know a, a lot of your listeners will probably find this, if they're in a, in a well-paid role, it's very hard to have that ability and confidence to step out of it and go, 
trust yourself and, and trust with the business. So I had the opportunity in that part time to start networking and building connections and was running some training with the connections I'd had in the past plus the new people that I was meeting in, in the networking. And that, when I first started, very much my focus was on women who in soul traders who were had a, a good technician at what they did, but they just lacked that confidence and the ability to speak about themselves, sell themselves, yeah. pitch their business, talk, talk themselves up yeah. and feel comfortable doing so, and which is such an important factor to be able to do. And then you know how we sometimes need to listen to things and get the information we had a new operations manager come into the role where into the workplace where I was yeah and it changed from a family business to a a different space when people moved around and I had planned on retiring in 2019 and instead chose to retire a year earlier because it was it was a necessary thing to do. Yeah. And it was absolutely the perfect thing to do. And, and I think that's something important that to understand is we get messages and we whether we listen to them or not at the time is, is such a critical factor, isn't it, Sean? You, know, you need to hear it and go is this the best thing for me and the best thing for me was to leave okay yes definitely and those listening skills are huge not just for us having a conversation right now but listening to yourself as you said and going okay is this the right move what am I going to do next how am mm. I going to help that person and so forth yeah That's absolutely mm. and part of that what worked out amazingly well is I we, went, we travelled overseas in 2019 and I had spent months booking three months, 75 nights of travel and all Airbnb bookings and you know, castles and, and all these amazing places, Iceland all through part of Northern Europe and it was phenomenal. We had a cruise, we had four car hires, nine flights. It was amazing. That would have been 2020 if I hadn't left the year earlier. Oh. And instead it was 2019. Okay. I am so fortunate that I you know, paid attention and went, this is what we need to do. Not that we ever knew what was coming in 2020, but it certainly, oh, yeah. it certainly worked out well. Well, yes. Well, your intuition, you stuck with it and it, it paid off by the sounds of it. Mm. And that's yeah. something... So with uh, Speech Perfect, you, you work with women only? Is that right? My, my usual line is I work with women or smart men. I'm not that fussy. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, what does that mean? Can you explain that? Oh, I do, work, I do work with men, men that are smart enough to come to me and ask for help. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, I understand that. Yes, working with men be a challenge yeah. no look I, I have raised men and and yeah. been around men and I, I I've had some amazing feedback from some of the men I've trained and have worked in business so I have that small still have that sole trade of female market but I also go into businesses and, and professional offices and do speaker training and sales training and I've had men come to me and say you are an excellent trainer of men they it's not they they want someone real. They, you know, it's a very different space. And mm. I, I train the same way. I train women and men. It just, but it's the, it's the, that connection. Yeah. A different yeah. connection. Yeah. 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 So it's two different markets. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that's great. And you have a podcast as well. Mm -hmm. The podcast yeah. is called We Are Women. And I have had the amazing experience of interviewing women from all around the world who are successful in what they do uh, for the last six years and there's 130 about 130 podcasts out interviews out there and I, I say it's all about health but meaning business health so 
things that will help you in your business marketing and business ideas and structure and systems, or it's about your physical health, how to look after yourself physically the best way you can, or your mental health. And, mm -hmm. and that's something that we talked about when you were on the interview is how to look after yourself mentally so that you can experience everything that we deserve in this world as, as well as we can possibly receive it. Mm, definitely. That's it. And, and it's great because I was on your podcast and it was um, amazing for you to interview me as well and just see what you did and how you interview people and, and how you actually help a lot of women out there to, to, for their voice and their self-belief. Can you go a little bit more into detail on that passion and, and where you, where it is that you um, came up with all those, that idea? Yeah. It's, it's that I've, I've always been one with a person with an opinions and sometimes that's good and sometimes that can be quite challenging for others. And I, as I mentioned before, I didn't realise that so many people have opinions and ideas but don't express them. And one of my favourite things is to have a really great discussion with somebody who is open and willing to express their opinions. Yes. But, most, but so many women I know shut down and they feel that they are not entitled to have that voice. And I've been working with a few people of late who have been bullied out of their workplace or they've had this sense that they've been bullied out of their workplace. You know, everyone's reality is a different experience, mm -hmm. but it's their reality that, that that's occurred. And they just, have, and their words to me is, I didn't feel like I had a voice. To be able to know how to articulate yourself and express your response and your feelings and, and how you want a situation to end up is, is something that, if you can do that, it's probably one of the most amazing powers that you can have. And if I can help people just grab a little bit of that through the training that I, I do, then it's, for me, that's my greatest, greatest joy. And even when it comes to the public speaking, now the, this, I know this interview is not going live immediately, but tonight at Power Talk, I'm, as I said, I'm still a member, it's, a, it's our speech contest night. Yeah. And I haven't entered for quite a few years. I usually am running them, but I decided to enter tonight. And it's, it's quite different, again, sitting back going, oh, it's a contest. And it's not the winning of it. I was thinking about why is it so important? To, it's not the winning of it, but it's important to do well. But, again, to be able to express it. But mm -hmm. when we have people come along to Power Talk meetings and you see them that they are timid and they, they're not game enough to get up and speak. And then after, you know, the support and encouragement and feeling like they're in a safe environment to do that in, that, you know, within a couple of months they're, they're sharing their story. And it's, it's such a, I, I think saying the word is a, a blessing to be able to experience that people can do that. It's yeah, and that being a little part of it, I coached, uh, and you did that said that in the intro. I coached um, is some international winners of the speech contest, and for that, I, I you know, it's one thing to compete, which was wonderful, but it's it's better, it's more of a thrill when someone you've coached wins. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic, and it is that you. You've coached all around the world and on webinars and, and things like that. What was your highlight when you're um, on stage or in front of people, training people? What is the highlight that you, you have? I, it's, it's quite funny. When I'm, I'm running a day's training, I know a lot of trainers will come home and, you know, feel a bit exhausted because you're just gifting all of your valued information. But I'm, I'm the opposite. I come home on a high just got this all this energy and I have a friend that I ring and oh, so I was training today she's like I can tell you're all hyped up and you know okay. it's, <laughs> but it, it gives me energy to do that one of one of the places I presented was in a I'm just trying to think which city it was in Kyoto 
one of the Japanese cities. Can't, just can't think which one it was. And it was the presentation had to be scripted because it had to be translated. Okay. I never do that. Mine is off the cuff. It's just whatever information is relevant. If I use a PowerPoint to prompt me for the training information that comes out. So I had to script. And so normally it's 90 minutes, but it had to be 45 minutes or 50 minutes because it was being scripted and repeated, wow. which is a really interesting thing to do. Yeah. And when I arrived to do the presentation, the translation had never got through to the translator oh Uh -oh. again it was off the cuff but then the translator had to be off the cuff as well and try and repeat which takes a lot more time than if they had read through and and because they're having to translate in their own head and then translate it into Japanese and that was yeah. it was and at this particular workshop I was being evaluated as a fellow of the organization so was, let's just make everything really let's pile it all on and see how we go oh, uh, it, no. you know, i was successful in, in the fellowship but and it was it was a fun workshop and it was just different because i use a fair bit of humor and not jokes but humor in my presentations and when you're delivering a bit of humor and the english speaking people in the room laugh at it and then the Japanese speaking people laugh a couple of minutes later if they get it because again translating something from one to the other is difficult it was interesting yeah and that was that was quite an interesting experience but every time you get up to present it's it's a, a an opportunity to learn something and some of those challenges I think are the most important that we can have i my my first professionally paid training gig was with a construction company and i was training their trainers who had to go out and do a whole lot of workplace health and safety training on how to engage their audience mm. and this was this was a, you know your first paid gig this is a lot of pressure on this it was a half day thing wow. and i walked into the room and i'd sent out a a bit of an evaluation form beforehand with the trainers on their training style so that, you know, they had an idea. I've gone up to one young woman and said, so how did you go with the evaluation? She said, oh, they're just rubbish. I, I, they're, too, they're so subjective. And I said, you are right, they are subjective. So, you know, the, the little voice in the back of my head's going, right, that was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> all right what's going to happen next and the way the room was set up the projector it was two long tables and I was standing in front of them the projector was on the middle of the front table this woman sat on the front table as did her boss at far far at the other end and the other six people sat on the back row yeah. I started doing the presentation and I did a bit of an intro thing and it, there's a bit of a, a there's a formula to doing presentations and I started the first part of the formula and the one of the people from the back row got up and walked to the side of the room and all eyes naturally followed oh, yeah. and then went up to the air conditioning unit and started playing with the air conditioning unit oh no and all eyes are on this person okay right and then he came back and I said all right, what we'll do is we'll get started again. And so I started again. And about 20 minutes, and everyone's out taking notes. And about 20 minutes into it, except this one woman who'd sat at the front, she has reached under the table. And again, all the eyes just went onto her. She grabbed out this huge bag, plonked it on the table, and started rummaging through it. Oh. I'm just standing, I'm standing there just not saying anything, just watching her do this. She's grabbed out her notepad and pencil and sat there and gone, ready to write. Oh, so I, oh okay, this is good. Now I'm going to pay attention to it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, the, you know, the next three hours there was without much interruption. And I'm thinking all of the things that we go through your head when you when you're doing something, is it your fault? Is there something you're doing wrong? And people are realise there's a whole lot of 
baggage that people bring into the room. I've had some clients that I've been training that got so distraught because someone's gone to sleep in their workshop or their training. Oh, and, wow. yes. and but it's not it's not them. It's there's there's always been some sort of outside influence. And I found out later this young woman, well she came and spoke to me later, but she stood in front of her regional manager to speak to me and interrupted us. So she didn't quite have the skills on how to respond to people as well as she she could have so just mm -hmm. make what what we now would say on spectrum yeah. i would say but, okay. but you don't know that i didn't know that until no, you wouldn't know yeah. that at the time definitely no, not no. So, did so, stand there until she was finished yeah yeah so it's it, there's things that that always go wrong no matter what you're doing there's things that will happen and instead of taking them on board as a Oh my gosh! I've made a big mistake, and you know this is I've, I'm a failure. It's mm. all right. Let's observe what's going on here and just keep going. Mm. That's I think that's one of the most important things is is not taking it on board that it it's your responsibility, but it's most things aren't your fault. Mm. It's your responsibility to do it well, but things aren't your fault. And with that, you build confidence. You build belief in your ability to do things. Mm -hmm. That's really sound advice, Janine, because I'm, and I've been on this public speaking journey for about three or four years now. And I understand at the very beginning, you're nervous standing in front of people. Mm -hmm. And you, you're wondering what people are going to think of you until you realize that it's getting more and more confident in standing your ground and trying to actually give value and it's all about who you are speaking in front of rather than about yourself so yeah go ahead were you gonna yeah I was going to say that, that that's one of the most important things because I, I work with a lot of professionals lawyers and accountants who have to deliver information to other lawyers and accountants mm -hmm. and so they're, they're so worried about the content and putting it all together rather than exactly what you said, who you're speaking to. Mm -hmm. It's it's and how to build connection with those with those people and focused on your audience and not on maybe how much information you've got or how you want to prove that you look smarter than everyone else in the room but it's mm. what you want your audience to be aware of do you, are you you know are you informing them or you do you want to inspire them or you want to persuade them to to do something whatever it is it's being really aware of your audience it's probably one of the most important factors when you're presenting mm, amazing yes and i've been to a couple of your workshops so i know that you are the queen of what you speak is what you do. And um, that's the, the biggest thing. I mean, this podcast is called The Real Deal. And I love to have people on that actually have real conversations. And, and what happens to you, just exactly what you said with the public speaking, the girl in the front row and she's distracted. So you're always going to have someone that is going to distract you in some way. It's how you, how you um, well, what would you say? how would you deal with that or how what would um you say to somebody that went through that like you did yeah it, it very much again and there's three responses to you know something going on that in a room that you can't deal with and you can and I'm just trying to think what the three they start with it all start with a d you can diffuse the situation uh, and you can, and we'll go with two of them because I've thought of those two. Or you, you can detach us from it, and mm -hmm. detaching from it is is the best way to respond to anything. It's be, it's again, like I said, it's 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 not your fault if something goes wrong, unless you really have stuffed up badly. But it is your responsibility to make sure things go right. Mm -hmm. And look, I've been done presentations. You've got the whole PowerPoint thing ready to go. You've got microphones. And then power goes off and nothing nothing works. I've presented on a cruise ship going through the inside passage in Alaska, and every time and it was with my radio microphone, and I was the compare of a, um, an event, and the microphone kept dropping out all of the time. And one of the one of the people I introduced, I introduced that they got finished university in 1879. Oh, it was pretty much impossible. And, and <laughs> I realised that when my friends in the front row started laughing. 
yeah. Um, so you know, I just said, look, if you if you see Valerie on the stairs, give her a hand, will you? You know, so <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's not. Yes, you just try and do your best, but there's and I and I'm a big believer in there's not nothing. There's no such thing as perfect. Mm. It does not exist. Perfection does not exist. Mm. You just do the best you, that you can do, mm. and and yeah, and just have that faith and belief in yourself. Mm. I have to tell you a story. Of, this happened about. This is about the twenty years ago again when I before I started public speaking or when I just started. Mm. And a this was a real catalyst for me. This was the moment that I said that it made all the difference. I went to the funeral of my longest, dearest friends. We grew, grew up next door to each other. Coincidentally, she lives across the park from me now this many years later. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And her mum passed away. And her mum, I called auntie because that's how close we were. Two months prior, her father had passed away and it was expected. It was cancer and every one of the, everyone was able to speak on his behalf. They were members of beautiful little Lutheran church at Wollongabba and it was one of those old churches with, you know, wooden with a pews and the it was anyway it's a lovely church and Annie Shirley had worked there and the church as a volunteer for 50 years she just was a you know a real stalwart of the church when she passed away the minister had left and there was a new minister there her death was very unexpected and none of the family felt that they they were it, they just couldn't speak like they at all they couldn't they were so distraught that they couldn't speak for her. The new minister didn't know her. So he said lovely words, but he didn't say what was at the heart of Shirley. And I was sitting in the pews with my mum and dad, and all I wanted to do was to be able to get up and say something, but I couldn't. And I swore to myself then. I would never be mute again, ever. And that just made a ton of di difference to I've been able to speak at other people's funerals and I've you know, shared information with a friend who you know, chose not to be here and other people came up to me and said, you said exactly what was in my heart and I want to thank you for doing it. So to me, having a voice is so important and that moment really was a huge moment for me to recognise that that's not happening again. I'll be the person that will stand up and I'll speak for myself and I'll speak for others if necessary. Mm, wow, that's amazing, Janine. Thank you for sharing that story. I yeah. appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, we are running out of time, but I know you have a couple offers and I wanted to share your books because I have them here. Um, just for all the viewers or the um, listeners out there, uh, Janine Vosper has written two books. Oh, I don't know if you can see them, but one's mm. called Good Girls Do Sell and the other one is Being Unstoppable. Can you say a little bit about both books? The Good Girls Do Sell was the first one that I wrote and I wrote most those 30,000 words in about four and a half days. Oh, wow. So it was, yeah, it was, it was. I was heading overseas on holidays and I was given a 30-day challenge, but I wasn't going to be here, so I got stuck in a lot of it it's a lot of the things I do in the training is in that book so the things that I share I shared in that and it's just how to feel comfortable about sales and being authentic about who you are and what you do and the other second one being unstoppable as a that was a longer process I seem to write that every time I was on holidays camped somewhere and I'd start a bit more of it a bit more of it and it, it's just about having that belief within you in yourself and if, how you if you're confronted with different different aspects and challenges in life how you can know that you've got it you've got it covered mm, amazing well I can't wait I've started the uh, good girls do sell and it's very practical I I'm enjoying it I read it every day a little bit every day so it's fantastic thank you Janine 
It's like uh, everyone t- used to tell me they carry it with them and they'd highlight bits. And if they were going into a sales call, they'll go, "Oh yeah, I need that's right. I remember to do that." Uh, <laughs> it's so practical, especially for women. You know that we. I mean, as you probably know of, the women out there are scared to sell, and you do put that in your book as well. But mm. everyone's selling something, which everyone's is selling something. Fantastic! It's um, it's good to hear that as well. Mm. Okay, so if you, I just want to ask you one question, then you can um, just tell us what you have on offer for the listeners and the viewers. Okay. If, if you would like the viewers or the listeners to take away one thing out of this podcast today, what would it be and why? One thing. I think it's that having that confidence and ability to knowing to be able to speak your truth and trusting that what you have to say is worthwhile. I think that's something that comes up a lot, especially when surprisingly when I'm dealing with very educated professional women mm-hmm. who are in, in more male-dominated industries and they just don't speak up because they don't feel that what they have is, is of value. But just trust that what you have to say is, is of value. It's, if it's of value to you, I guarantee it will be of value to somebody else, even if it's just one person but it, it will. So, so use your voice. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Use your voice, everyone. You hear that? Use your voice. And what offers do you have on today, Janine? You have well, events coming at up? Any, yeah, I do. I've, at any time, anyone can go to my website, which is janinebosper.com, and you can book in for a free strategy call. And I, they're about 20 minutes long. And what I do is we talk about what you want to achieve in your business or in your life. And if I can help you, I will definitely suggest how I can do that. If I can't, I have got a bank of amazing people that I can recommend who can help you. And it's just knowing that I think that that's the most important step is I've had the most amazing coaches throughout my career. You, you cannot, you cannot achieve or succeed without coaches and finding the right people to help you is the most important thing you can you can possibly do and again so if I can't help then I'll get somebody and I'll put you onto somebody who definitely can so that's available all the time so that's janinebosper.com you can find me on all of the platforms either under speech perfect or janine bosper I love five-star reviews on Google if somebody's listened to this and go, oh, she's pretty cool. I like that. Happy to have five-star reviews on Google. It's, it's wonderful. That's under Speech Perfect. But the really, really special offer I've got is I run a speaking public speaking masterclass. It's professional speaking. It's from people who are just starting out with nerves right up to really advanced speakers. I run small group training with about six to eight people. It's a full day masterclass. You get to do a lot. I stand there and do nothing all day, but you get to do heaps. And I, the price of that is normally $5.97 plus GST. But if people, I'm going to put a special um, link on the, on the Humanitix booking site. And if you book in and you've listened to Sean's podcast, then you can have that at half price, which I, I don't ha- ever have to discount because I fill workshops. But um, that's only for three people because there's already a few people booked into that. And that is on, what day did I say? The 20th of, 20th? 20th yes. of May, mm-hmm. Friday the 20th of May. So if that's of interest to anyone and they've just been thinking, I really need to get the confidence in my to have a speak, you will absolutely love the workshop and you'll walk away sort of bouncing, thinking about how how much more confidence you'll have in your ability to share your voice. Mm, beautiful. Thank you, Janine. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, this is The Real Deal with Sean Matthews, where we have real conversations with real people, entrepreneurs and business owners alike. Thanks again, Janine, for all your value you've given us today. Most welcome. I've loved it, Sean. Thank you very much for having me on. It's been great. Take care. Bye now. Bye-bye.